We have put this short information film together to introduce you to the functions, features and operations of your Nebi heat pump. In this film, as well as talking to residents who have them in their homes and use heat pumps on a daily basis, we'll also cover some common functions and basic system care for the end user. Hello, I'm Mike Proudfoot, I'm the Maintenance Manager for Muir Housing Group. Uh, we're here today at the Hollies in Cheshire to talk about the, the newly installed central heating system. These are two bedroom apartments in this newly completed estate, um, completed about two to three months ago, primarily for shared ownership, which allows first time buyers to get their foot on the property ladder. In this particular apartment, the model that we've fitted is the Nebi F205P. That provides all the heating, hot water and heat recovery necessary for this apartment. We're really excited about having these systems fitted into the apartments. The green credentials are second to none. They are easy to use and we're hoping for a, a saving in fuel for our residents. I moved into this house in Briggsley uh, about six months ago now in, in July of last year. Um, when we first looked at the um, at the heating system, it looks quite um, complex and it's going to be difficult to use. But in comparison to the other systems I've used in previous properties, it's much easier to use. And, and obviously, if we're doing a bit for the environment as well, then that then that all helps as well. So, the experience has been great. As well as being easy to use, the the other benefits of the system are that the um, we don't seem to get any any cold spots. There's no drafts. Um, the hot water is always readily available. I mean, we've had times where we've we've had two or three baths within a space of a few hours and there's always been plenty of hot water there to use as well so yeah really good really good if you look on the system it tells you what the temperature is outside to inside so it gauges it that way and where as our old property you're more or less messing around with it all the time regulating it regulating it where with this it all sort of flows it's about well, flows itself what we've also noticed about this system is that the, the temperature is, is very constant throughout the day and night. So with other, with other types of heating systems, you get your peaks and troughs when, you, when you've got your radiators on, on full blast and, and then off. With this one, the radiators are never on full. The underfloor heating never seems to be overly hot. It's just always at a nice, a nice ambient temperature. Um, even last week I got up in the middle of the night and normally in a, in a normal house you'd be expecting it to be freezing cold but it, it was just the same temperature as in the day so I mean I'm no expert on how it, how it actually works but it just seems to, it seems to be fantastic. So. We have a family of eight and constantly every day I'm doing a load of washing and basically I put it on the clothes area and let them dry that way and I noticed from doing it in this house to my last house in my last house, my windows were getting steamed up and everything. In this house, because you've got all the air vents, no windows steam up, don't feel damp. You know, it's lovely. For my job, I work in the property industry as a, as a damp specialist. So I'm quite familiar with things like condensation and damp and mould forming. With this system, because it's changing the air much more often and more rapidly, it's removing any moisture that you produce in cooking, cleaning, bathing, that type of thing. It's not allowing the moisture to settle on windows and, and walls. It's been replaced by, by the warm air of the, of, the, of the system, so no chance of any, of any unhealthy air. It, the, the air is always fresh and, and free of any moisture, so that's another benefit, really. I would understand why people were perhaps a little bit sceptical of, of this type of system, with it being very new and, and different technology to what we're used to, but once you've got your head around how it works and you don't have to be changing settings and dials and turning things on and off constantly daily, then it's much much more easy to use. If I got the chance to recommend this system to anybody, I would I would tell them to to sort of snap it up with both hands because we found it much more beneficial to our lifestyle in that, like I said, not only the cost point of view but the ease of use of the whole system. That we we find it absolutely fabulous. So I certainly recommend it to anybody. The way your exhaust air heat pump is designed to work is to extract air from the wet rooms, such as the kitchen and bathroom, through a ducting system back to the heat pump, where the heat pump extracts the energy from this air in order to provide further heating and hot water for the property. Air which the ventilation system extracts from the wet rooms will remove steam from the bathroom and kitchen, therefore relieving the necessity to open windows. Opening windows can reduce the amount of energy that the heat pump can extract from the inside air therefore can potentially lead to a reduction in the efficiency of the system. 
because your heat pump works at a lower temperature than a typical gas boiler, it is normal for your radiators not to feel overly hot. The thermostatic control on your radiator has a range of settings, from being completely off, the white circle, to being fully on, the black circle, with varying temperature settings in between. The normal setting for your everyday living areas, such as the living room, dining room and kitchen, is setting 3. For rooms which you use less and require less heat, such as your bathroom and bedrooms, setting 2 is recommended. Although your heat pump requires very little maintenance, we do advise that once a month you check that all the ventilation ducts are free of dust, and are not blocked in any way. If you do need to clean any of the ventilation units, simply use a duster to clean the surface, or remove the unit covers to wash and clean them more thoroughly before replacing them back into their housings. Depending on your system, you will have one or two vents bringing clean air in from the outside and three to four internal vents mounted in the ceiling in different rooms. These vents are an essential part of your heating system and circulate air through the heat pump and around your property. To make sure that the correct ceiling vents stay in the correct rooms, we suggest that you clean each vent separately to avoid mixing them up. It is also essential that the settings of the individual vents are not tampered with or swapped between rooms as these have been preset and balanced by the installer for them to work to their best efficiency. We'll now look at the controls of the F360P. Working from left to right of the panel, firstly we have the pressure gauge that should normally show a reading of between 1 to 2 bars of pressure. To the right of the pressure gauge is the main power switch. Under normal everyday operation, this should always be set to the on position and must only be changed if advised to by an engineer. On the far right hand side, there is a digital display and function buttons. There are many advanced features of this unit that should only be accessed by a qualified installer. So we will now demonstrate the features which you can safely change yourself. The first menu shown is menu 1 which is indicated in the bottom left hand corner. This menu shows the current hot water temperature and which state of operation the unit is currently in. To the top left of the display you will see a small circular icon. This indicates that the compressor is running. The next small circular icon to the right indicates that the fan is running. and the circular icon to the far right indicates that the central heating circulation pump is running. Below the display window you will see six buttons and a control dial. The three buttons on the right are used to navigate up and down the different menus and enter your selection. The button to the top left is used to select the operating mode of the heat pump. By pressing the button once the display indicates both the season mode in which the unit is currently operating and that the auto mode is activated. In this setting the unit will automatically choose the best, most economical and energy efficient season mode to deliver hot water and heating to meet your needs depending on the temperature outside. We recommend leaving the unit in this auto setting. Pressing the operating mode button again turns off the auto mode and enters the manual mode. By repeatedly pressing the operating button, you can now cycle through the three different season settings that are available. These include the summer mode. In this setting, the unit will only produce hot water from the heat pump and supply no central heating at all. The spring and autumn mode. In this setting, the unit will produce both hot water and central heating from the heat pump. The winter mode. In this setting the unit will produce both hot water and central heating from the heat pump but also uses the additional internal immersion heater to boost the output if required. Please be aware that if you choose to manually set the season mode yourself, the unit will stay in the last selected mode continually until another season mode is selected. This may result in higher running costs if the wrong season is selected in relation to the actual temperature outside. As the heat pump is designed to run constantly and never turned off completely, 
there is a feature which allows the unit to be turned down to save energy. For example, when you're in bed or out at work. This is called setting back the unit. And can either be done manually using the control dial or automatically through a timed schedule. However, it is important that the setback function is administered within our recommended guidelines as it may cause your energy consumption to increase if you operate the heat pump higher or lower than our recommended values. The control dial below the display window is used to manually set the setback value. The center setting of zero is the normal setting and will give you the unit's true temperature. Each white marker represents approximately one degree of room temperature change. So moving the dial two segments to the right will tell the unit to increase the room temperature by two degrees. Moving the dial two segments to the left will drop the temperature by two degrees. Under no circumstances should this dial be moved beyond the white shaded area at the top section of the dial, as the unit will use additional energy to try to meet the demand which will result in higher energy bills. To set the setback time using a schedule, you need to firstly enter the clock menu, which is in menu seven. Select this using the enter button. Then cycle through this menu using the plus button until you get to the temp setback time and select this option with the enter button. The default setting will show off. Press the enter button and press the plus button once. The display will now read heating system one. Press enter to select this option, then press the plus button once more. The display will now be showing the offset heat curve option and the default value of zero, which is the normal setting. Press the enter button and the zero will flash. You can now use the plus or minus buttons to set the required offset value. Bear in mind that each number represents one degree of temperature change. So if the normal room temperature is 22 degrees and you set the offset to minus two, this will lower the room temperature two degrees below normal to 20. And plus two will lift the room temperature to 24 degrees. We do not recommend setting the setback below minus three. Once you are happy with the setback value, press the enter button to lock this into the unit. The next step is to set the days and time of day when the setback will operate. Press the plus button. The display will now show set time Monday. Press the enter button to set the setback time for Monday. The display will now change to a clock where you can use the plus, minus and enter buttons to set the start and stop times when the setback will operate. Here we have set the start time to 2200, 10 o'clock at night and the stop time to 0500, 5 a.m. in the morning. Always remember to set the stop time about an hour before you actually want the temperature to reach normal comfort. Repeat the same procedure for each day of the week. Once you have set all the days and times, select the return option using the plus or minus buttons and select return again to exit to the main screen. Because this heat pump is designed not to be switched off, it comes with a room sensor which allows you to set the normal room temperature for the heat pump to maintain. You may have a different sensor to this one in your property, but they all function in a very similar way. If you have this type of sensor, you will see the numbers from one to nine one representing a room temperature of 15 degrees and nine representing a room temperature of 30 degrees. The normal room temperature setting is number five, which is 21 degrees. Simply move the dial to a higher or lower number to increase and decrease the room temperature. We advise using the settings four, five or six. This feature allows you to set the unit to produce extra hot water using the internal immersion heater for a chosen period of time. Simply press the hot water boost button to cycle through the preset time periods. These time periods will give you extra hot water for a period of 24, 12, 6 or 3 hours. To select the desired time period, simply press the enter button. In this example, you will now have hot water for the next three hours from the time you pressed enter. If you set the boost feature and then decide that you wish to cancel the hot water boost feature, simply press the hot water boost button once to enter the menu, then press it again to switch the boost off. 
then press the enter button to return to the main menu screen. Finally, the button to the bottom left of the unit is used for advanced operations and should only be used by an approved installer. If by accident this button is pressed, simply keep pressing the button to cycle through the settings until the display reads normal. Then press the enter button to leave the menu. The filter is required to be cleaned roughly every three months. Release the front top panel by carefully pulling it towards you with the bottom edge. Then lift it off of the hooks at the top of the panel. You will now see the filter at the top of the unit. Pull the filter housing out fully. The white filter membrane can easily be cleaned by simply vacuuming the filter membrane with any conventional domestic vacuum cleaner. If you notice any holes in the filter or it is damaged in any way, you will need to contact your installer or housing association to get a replacement filter fitted. To replace the filter, ensure that it is located on the top runners and then slide the filter all the way back. To replace the panel, hook it back on the top and gently push the bottom back onto the spring clips until they click. In the event that you need to speak with an engineer regarding your heat pump, you will need to quote your heat pump serial number. So it's a good idea to note this down before you call. The serial number is located behind the bottom service panel on a sticker that starts with the letters SN and is followed by the 14 digit serial number. If you require further operating instructions regarding your heat pump or room thermostat, please refer to the user manuals that have been left with your unit. Alternatively, you can visit www.nebi.co.uk where you can download copies of the user manuals.